Hello. Hi. This is Kerry. And this is Kat. And, and we, we are T in, in Valhalla. Valhalla. <laughs> and today we're in beautiful Herefordshire. We're visiting Arthur's Stone. This is a 5,000 year old Neolithic burial site um, known as a dolmen. And we're having a special tour of the area and the excavations taking part here by the University of Manchester. <gasps> and do you think you're going to an excavation without me? Oh, Ooh. no. Hello, it's what? Open Minded Wonder. It's Cara. What on earth? Of course, we couldn't come to an excavation without Cara. A brilliant channel, fantastic. If you haven't already, please be sure to check her out. Yeah, please. All sorts of history, drone flying. Yes, and they're very beautiful, very relaxing videos. Yes. Please give her a look and subscribe. And another reason we're here today is because we won a competition that Cara oh, yes. was running, and that was a map. Yes, for a 500 subscriber giveaway that yep. Cara did back at the start of the year. It's a map of ancient Britain. So thank you very much for that, Cara. Thank you, and Pleasure. it will show us all the historical sites. Is that right, Cara? It does indeed. Oh, I'm excited that. for that. I'm very excited for that. But we thought this was a very fitting place to pick that to up. To trade, yeah, to trade our, our prize, our reward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cara. Sure. Anyway, we're going to have a nice little walk around now and get ready for the tour. There's a good fable, good tale to this as well. And that's the reason it got its name in about the 13th century was because obviously mythical ideals over how this could possibly be here came to place okay. and the idea that Arthur, King Arthur, fought a giant here and as the giant was dying he put his arms on it and there's two marks in the stones, two indents where his elbows fell after Arthur slay him. The here. giant. Yeah, obviously completely true. <laughs> obviously. Ob ob obviously. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, there there That's how it got its name. That's Arthur's stone was from from that legend from about the that... 13th century yeah the idea that uh, King Arthur came here and but obviously this is thousands of years older yeah it's about 5,000 years old which is about a thousand years older than Stonehenge and hopefully with thanks and and some of the results of the dig over the next few months years we'll, we'll know a little bit more about it as well exactly, isn't it exactly yeah um, which is why it's so important. You but know, these dolmens things. Uh, are very important because often you will find skeletal remains, pottery, yeah. um, tools, and that tells you about their movement, about the people's movement at that time. Yeah. And it's really important because they're, they're pieces of jigsaw. So the more you get, the more you understand about the movement through ancient Britain. So here at the wonderful Arthur Stone this morning with Cara, the open-minded wanderer. Kat and Cara just behind me over there having a little bit of a chat. I'm just going to go up having a little look at the stone. We're just waiting for English Heritage who are going to be doing a tour this morning. Um, so we've booked all of this online. It was actually Cara's idea, so thank you and well done, Cara. Great shout. Um, Arthur Stone itself is just up uh, right on the road here. And I think actually Kat and Cara were just saying how actually the road dissected the, the end of it at some point. Um, we're parked in the field today for our tour, um, free parking, but normally there is just a little lay-by just up ahead where you can park in and see the stone for yourself, as well as fantastic views out over the Black Mountains. So I've just been called across by Ian, our guide for the morning for our tour. So I'm just going to go and meet the group now and uh, excited to see this area. It's never been excavated or explored before, so really important for sharing information and attaching timelines to things, who was where, when. What was significant about the Neolithic is that the previous Mesolithic and Paleolithic, they were the hunter-gatherers. And so their lifestyle was not to stay in one place. And so you don't get many settlements and fixed locations because they were basically following their food. I know. Uh, and then all this area so between last year and this year each hole within this trench represents a wooden post that was part of a larger structure leading to arthur's stone this could have possibly been a ceremonial walkway into the inner burial chamber pretty regularly spaced they are yeah okay so, so we've, do get a big we've gap, excavated every other one yeah, just okay. because of um, oh, right. uh, space so once we've 
I'm still going to finish these. We'll dig another one there and another one just here. So they were quite but, close together. But at the then. moment, everything's too close together, okay. so we can do it that way at yeah. the moment. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. That's right. You're Is that something there? Uh, that's um, halfway through its investigation, no, so uh, we haven't fully is. interpreted that yet. Okay. But so potentially it could be something. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. And you guys have just arrived. These are new. These are all new ones. Hi guys. Okay. So they're all new to the project this morning, so they're, they're just finding their feet. The subtle change of soil consistency and colour is the prominent archaeological feature in this area. Apparently, this could be due to something called tree throw, which is the uprooting of a tree hundreds or even thousands of years ago, altering the subsoil. Or it could be a deliberate feature relating to Arthur's stone. I guess that's for the students to find out. So the first part of the tour, Ian was just talking about the digs and the ditches that they've got going on, and the fact they've actually got students coming over from America to take part. Um, and I think the first batch of students have just gone back and a new lot have landed this morning. So brilliant that they've come in such fine weather. I hope they don't think this is what it's like all the time. But uh, really interesting to hear and learn about the ditches. I'm sure Kat and Cara will tell you more about that in a little bit. The stone material looks like it's it's tumble or it's yeah. material that's from the monument but yeah. probably as the monument has has gone into disrepair yeah. it's five and a half thousand years old so it's uh, it's kind of fallen apart a bit so the hope is that as we take some of this loose material off we will actually come across um actual like existing walls or architecture or structure like we we know one of the fence posts so the one just at the far end of that trench when they replace that timber post the hole that it was sitting in was about six or seven courses of dry stone walling behind it. It would be lovely if we could see big old walls running across here. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, well you've got to take this all out really carefully, presumably. Very carefully. And photograph every inch of the way. And that's it. Lots of photos, lots of drawings, just to make sure that everything that we we, we move about is fully recorded. Good luck. Thank you yeah, very much. Good luck. It is likely that the burial mound possibly started somewhere back there, maybe 15, 20 metres into that field, and would have covered. Again, it's all speculation. We don't. Nobody actually knows whether any of this would have still been shown when it was, if you like, fully functional. It may have been that the mound, you can imagine, came up to the level of the capstone, or it may have covered it totally, or it may have left it more exposed. But clearly that would have been like the important burial chamber for that. And then here, there is this curving access sort of um, way into it um, and again we'll have a closer look at it possibly with a block off there so that may have been an access into it or it may have been like a side chamber that was used separately not yet known uh, a lot of speculation all of the stone is likely to be quite local it's old red sandstone there's a whole line of that runs up and down from the north right the way through it's probably it's what Perifid Cathedral is made out of um, so they were probably quite local not like Stonehenge you know where the blue stones came from for Sally to Stonehenge they're pretty local but that capstone is calculated to weigh about 25 tons so even if it was local mm. you know that's a, a lot that's a lot of tons to manipulate into place and it stands on nine upright stones and why it looks a bit peculiar is firstly the top the capstone split whether it split when they were putting it together or afterwards we don't know and then that flat piece underneath has actually flaked off the capstone so that was a piece of the capstone that's dropped down and obviously it's taken some of the uprights with it so it looks a bit jumbled at the moment the, the bit to imagine is a long mound starting broader at that end coming along this way, stopping here, and now we think with those two big lines of posts going away from it, so as well as burial, it was obviously ceremonial, whether there was some kind of shaman 
types that led these ceremonies, quite possible, and again nobody knows, we can only speculate. The stone at the end has been called like a false entrance and that may be it or it might have been you know to block off the end of the burial chamber. Other speculation is perhaps it has been a capstone that had fallen and somebody then erected it and made it upright. All of this is kind of possibilities but not definitely known and no, they've not yet been allowed to dig in this area. Where these uh, posts are and flags, they're hoping to be allowed to extend that trench further in. They're given really strict limits by Historic England about where they can go. And they're the archaeologists are obviously desperate to do more. And so they've asked to be allowed to do more and they're waiting for permission. We've just had an amazing tour, haven't we, Cara? We have indeed. That was fantastic. So much brilliant information. This is obviously the top. The capstone, absolutely beautiful. And C.S. Lewis had the inspiration here uh, for Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe for where Aslan was slain and the, uh, the cap broke in two when he died. Isn't that wonderful? What a, what a nice bit of information though, I really like yeah. that. Because actually when I was a kid, it was one of my favourite ever books. So that's a really cool thing to find out. I love that. And over there is the Skirid, right in the background over there, miles away. And obviously all the Black Mountains there. Gorgeous. And down there is the beautiful Golden Valley. No wonder they chose this point to have their dolmen, one of the most important structures of the Neolithic era. So we've not long finished our tour and we're just chatting with Ian. Cara and Cass have spotted an unguarded dig site. They're both descended on it like red kites from the sky. Very interesting area. This is possibly a ditch, so they're just digging it out, seeing if there's a ditch that runs along here. You can see actually a bit of a divot that runs down there. Seems the, the diggers have disintegrated in the mid-morning yeah. sun. They go through them at a rate of knots in the sun, so that they've just ordered a new batch. One absolutely amazing morning, so we're just heading back to the car now. And we're going to grab a sandwich, grab a cup of tea, have a little chat with Cara, and uh, maybe a little bit of a picnic. So we're just learning some tricks and uh, Look at this. tips from Cara. <laughs> I was just saying to Cara, I have no idea why I've never done that. She froze her drink before coming out, which was so clever. Very wise, very <laughs> wise. It's extremely wise. I've never done that and I should have done it. Mm -hmm. We've had a brilliant morning, haven't we? It's yeah, been... it's been amazing. Absolutely loved the it. The tour was fantastic. Yeah. Ian, the guide, as you've seen, was really helpful, really yeah. really knowledgeable and really passionate about everything. And then we actually did have a little chat with some of the, the guys and girls in yeah. the holes as so well, didn't we? it's not just um, at the start, I mistakenly said it was just um, the University of Manchester. It's also the University of Cardiff. Yeah. So uh, we were actually speaking to um, some of the university professors earlier. Yeah. They're very knowledgeable and very open to speaking with the public. So yeah. if you ever want to know more, I'm sure they'd be happy to tell you. Yeah, if you're here and you see them about, I'm sure if you just ask politely, they, yeah. they'd be happy to help. Um, but yeah, we just had a cup of tea and a sandwich. So, skull. Skull. <laughs> have you seen mine? It's got writing on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, but that's good. It's almost like a diary, then, yeah. isn't it? Like a diary. Of well, your... that's why I started it. Perry Castle Rig is on here, mate. Oh, excellent. We were just up there not long ago. Yeah. One of your favourite little spots in the lakes, as well, isn't it? It is. I love that place. pieces of the puzzle will fall into place. That's a great, great gift. I love it. Cara, thank it's a you. really good gift to give. An amazing time here this morning at the archaeological excavation of Arthur Stone. It's been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot. Uh, you guys enjoyed yourself too? Oh, I loved it. It's been really cool. Really, really cool. Apart from the heat, which has been really, really hot. <laughs> but we can, we, we love that as well. Um, so from us today, it's going to be farewell. If you've enjoyed today's adventure, don't forget to click that like button. Drop us a little comment down below. Tickly if you're new to the channel, um, I believe you might be, don't forget to click that subscribe button Boom. and hit that bell notification. Ding dong. And that... check out oh. Open Minded Wanderer, please. Absolutely, yeah, please do check out Open Minded Wanderer, Kara's channel, Beautiful fantastic channel. channel. Go and give her a look, give her a sub, show us some love. Um, so until our next adventure, stay safe and well. And keep enjoying those green spaces. Bye Take everyone. Care. Bye. Bye.